Hey everyone, welcome back to Cryptolenium. Before we jump in, take a look at this clip from Kevin O'Leary today about FTX and the SEC. FTX? Um, I, I wanted to confirm the amount being requested. Was it going to be six or eight? Uh, Sam called me back. Very, uh, you know, standard conversation. He was, uh, you know, rational. And uh, we had that conversation about confirming what the amount was going to be. Um, the amount was $8 billion. That's what they were looking for. So uh, I went back to these various entities that were asking me about it. And by that time, the SEC chair was on the air around the world. I think the network was CNBC. And he made it clear uh, that they were going to uh, come down hard on this situation. So the minute that occurred, that was the end of any sovereign wealth funds interest. That was Kevin O'Leary speaking on the prospect of possibly purchasing or investing in FTX after the fallout. So he said he was completely out of this as soon as he realized the SEC was on this like flies on horse dung. Venture capitalist was looking to throw FTX a lifeline, but looks like not. And as we can see, for those of you who don't know who Gary Gensler is, he is the chair of the SEC. This man right here is under fire amid FTX crypto chaos. Now, if we take a look at the FTT token, as of about a half an hour ago, Binance has completely stopped the API. You cannot look at the trading interface between the Binance exchange and the FTT token. They've basically pulled the plug on FT on the FTT token. All we have left here is, is the remnants of the FTT token trading on FTX, but that stopped two days ago. And at this point, this is what I'm seeing. I was planning on giving you guys an update on the FTT token, but they pulled the plug. This was within about a half an hour ago. And if we go into this further, SEC chair under fire amid FTX crypto chaos. Gary Gensler, the public right now would benefit from investor protection around these various service providers. If you wish, the exchanges, the lending platforms, and the broker dealers. So we at the SEC are working in each of those three fields exchanges, lending, and broker-dealers, and talking to industry participants about how to come into compliance or modify some of that compliance. Now, he is in a rush for regulation, and I'll tell you why. Because he is not looking too good right now. After several meetings with SBF, it came to light that this is the case. If you take a look, this was a comment from Elon Musk earlier today where he shared a photo that is quite interesting. You might have already seen this on social media, but Sam Bakeman fried CEO of FTX, MIT graduate, his ex-girlfriend and the CEO of Alameda, the investment arm, if you will, of FTX, Carolyn Ellison dated Bankman fried daughter of Glenn Ellison. Now, who is Glenn Ellison? It's just her dad, right? Glenn Ellison is the professor of economics at MIT, former boss of Gary Gensler, the SEC chairman currently, head of SEC, former professor at MIT, and as we all know, Sam Bankman-Fried is MIT alumni. This is wild. This cannot be made up. Um, Netflix is definitely going to make a special on this one. I can tell you that. If we go into this further... SBF's Alameda moved 89 million of crypto in a new wallet. This is today, November 14th. Um, some of you may be watching this in November 15th, of course, because uh, we're just running out of time in this day. In the past 24 hours, Alameda Research has moved 2.7 million worth of Serum, FTX, and Uniswap tokens into a wallet where now Bankrupt Trading Desk has amassed 89 million worth of assets, according to on-chain data. As of writing, none of the wallets, all labeled as belonging to Sam Bankman Fried's crypto trading firm Alameda Research by blockchain analytics firm Nansen, have tried to move the funds since yesterday. All transactions are just the most recent unexplained transfers by wallets belonging to Alameda Research following the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing of FTX Group, which includes FTX.com, 
West Realm Shires, the parent company of FTX US and Alameda Research. So more money, more unaccounted for money is being funneled around and messed with. And we don't know what it's doing. We don't know where it's going. But all we can do is wait. And if you want to take a look at this article, feel free to pause, comment on it, what you think. We'll move on. Another thing that I thought was interesting that I figured you guys should see is all the possible companies associated with this crash and SBF's actions or possibly people who are, you know, the controllers in the back, the puppet masters. As you can see, all of these companies, and I don't know if it's all of them, but I know 130 plus, just a few of them we are probably familiar with. I know Masari, Polygon, Solana, Lido, Aptos, the newly popular Layer 1, and many others. Let's take a look at this. This was the New York Times article and new interview with Sam Bankman Freed. How Sam Bankman Freed's crypto empire collapsed. Some called this a, uh, a more of a, a sympathy article, if you will, for Sam Bankman Freed. Doesn't outline many of the atrocities that are now being alleged, but uh, we'll go on with what this says. So less than a week, the crypto currency billionaire Sam Bankman Freed went from industry leader to industry villain, lost most of his fortune, and became the target of investigations by the SEC Commission and Justice Department. Now, in a wide-ranging interview on Sunday that stretched past midnight, he sounded surprisingly calm. You would have thought that I'd be getting no sleep right now. Instead, I'm getting some, he said. It could be worse. Now, as soon as I read this, and this is my personal opinion, I first thought that this guy might be a sociopath. Honestly, how he's acting, all the lives that he's ruined, and he does not sound like he's feeling that. The empire built about around Bankman, by Bankman Freed was once compared to titans like J.P. Morgan and Warren Buffett. With an $8 billion shortfall, though, forcing the firm to file for bankruptcy. So he didn't he didn't quite get there, but uh, it was a good try. Um, and besides some Twitter posts, messages to employees, and occasional texts to reporters, Bankman Freed 30 has said little publicly over the last week. So this interview is very, very important. It says he voiced numerous regrets over the FTX collapse. But I don't know if there was very many apologies. He would, I think he might have actually backtracked on his apologetic tone. But he would offer only limited details about central questions swirling around him. You know, about the billions, all that, how they use them. But Adami, Alameda had accumulated a large margin position on FTX, essentially meaning it had borrowed funds from the exchange... Mr. Bankman Freed said it was substantially larger than I had thought it was. This is embarrassing for somebody who, you know, put himself in such a high position. Mr. Bankman Freed did, however, agree with critics in the crypto community who said he had not expanded his business interests, that he, that he had expanded his business interests too quickly across a wide swath of industry, of the industry. He said his other commitments had led him to miss signs that FTX was running into trouble. I had a bit more concentrated. If I had, I been a bit more concentrated on what I was doing, I would have been able to be more thorough. He said that would have allowed me to catch what was going on on the risk side. That's terrible. That's terrible. Hindsight is 2020, but this is terrible. Bankman Freed, who is based in the Bahamas, declined to comment on his location because obvious reasons people are after him. And, you know, in recent months, there have been warning signs that his business empire was in peril. So, as he embarked on a buying spree, and in Washington... He was pushing an ambitious regulatory agenda while speaking critically about Shang Jin Pao Zhao, Zhao, CZ Binance, better known as CZ Binance, 
the head of the number one crypto exchange in the world, the chief executive of the of the rival, who eventually mobilized his extensive Twitter following to set off the run on FTX. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like a victim statement because in my eyes, CZ saved many people. Yes, he did not save the 5 million plus that might have lost funds through FTX's actions. But this is all about crypto. This is all about transparency, decentralization. So for him to tell Twitter that he was going to slowly start offloading FTX token because he was concerned with their liquidity and solvency situation, to me, he's a hero. To me, he's a hero, and there's going to be critics, and there's going to be victims that act just like this because he didn't set off a run on FTX on purpose. He basically just tried to mediate the problem and help a little bit of people. You know, he's basically a utilitarian, helping the most that he possibly could. Despite billions that venture capital firms put into the company, FTX had none of those outside investors on its board. Now, this is a big red flag for anybody that in, that understands venture capitalism for the entire the, the, the entire set of its investors to not have any say in the operations of the company is extremely concerning, just from a rookie perspective even. And so it's mentioned that he's living with about 15 people, but he can't live with more than 15 because it would be too uncomfortable in his penthouse in the Bahamas. FTX and Alameda were closely linked as well. So Alameda is the investment arm that Carolyn was the CEO of. Alameda traded heavily on the FTX platform, meaning it sometimes benefited when FTX's other customers lost money, a dynamic that critics called a conflict of interest. This is what's going to spark regulation, this right here, because the fact that this was even possible in our modern day shows you that crypto is really in its infancy. In the past, Mr. Brankman Freed has defended the arrangement saying that Alameda provided crucial liquidity injections of capital that enabled others customers to complete transactions on the exchange. Alameda was run by Miss Ellison, but Mr. Bankman Freed was also in involved contributing to the decision making on big trades. This is crazy. A person familiar with the company's inner working said at times there did not appear to be much of a firewall between the businesses. Alameda was supposed to operate out of a separate office, but a guest who visited FTX's complex in recent months said Miss Ellison had been sitting within view of computers displaying the exchange's trading data. This is obviously a conflict of interest, but we'll move on. So a couple of executives to note here, and not anywhere do they mention in this article the name. You know who I'm going to say? Dan Friedberg. Where is he in this article? There is not a single mention of Dan Friedberg anywhere in today's articles at all. Is he just poof, gone? This guy's good. Keep an eye out because we're not going to hear much about him unless they really get to the bottom of this. And perhaps Mr. Bankman Freed's most ambitious aim was to shape crypto regulation in Washington, where he testified to Congress and met with regulators. He also used his growing influence in the crypto capital in the capital to criticize his biggest rival, Mr. Zhao, CZ Binance. In private meetings, people familiar with the matter said, attacking Mr. Zhao was not a good strategic move on my part. You could say that again, Mr. Brankman Freed said on Sunday. I was pretty frustrated at a lot of what I saw happening, but I should have understood that it was not a good decision for me to express that. This is not the time to try to look like the good guy, my friend. This is not. This is, it's, it's honestly disgusting to me because CZ is, you know, he has integrity. Um, there could be a lot of rumors out there, but I would just look at things from both sides. A former investor in FTX, Mr. Zhao, still owned a large amount of FTT, a crypto that, in, that FTX invented to facilitate trading on its platform. 
on November 6th. This was when it was announced that they were going to be withdrawing their deposits. We won't pretend to make love after divorce, Mr. Zhao wrote on Twitter. We won't support people who lobby against other industry players behind their backs. These two events are not directly correlated. This tweet right here was not directly correlated with him saying that they were going to withdraw their funds. As a witness of this in real time, I will tell you that CZ spoke separately of this situation, lobbying against industry players and offloading the tokens due to a potential insolvency issue that could have collapsed the entire crypto market. When FTX collapsed, Mr. Zhao initially agreed to buy the exchange in what would have amounted to a bailout. But soon the deal fell through after Binance found problems in the company's financials within less than 24 hours of due diligence, may I add. In a Signal Group chat that included Mr. Bankman-Fried and other FTX representatives, Mr. Zhao, or C better known as CZ Binance, posted a curt note according to two people familiar to the matter. CZ Binance directly said to Sam Bankman-Fried, Sam, I'm sorry, he wrote. But we won't be able to continue this deal. Way too many issues. CZ. Mr. Bankman Freed scrambled to line up new financing. I shouldn't throw stones in a glass house. So I'll hold back a bit. I think he has to hold back a lot more than he's trying to sound like he, you know, he has something on other people, but he should just calm down. Uh, and this is again just my opinion. He said in a message to employees obtained by the New York Times. Except to say, probably they never really planned to go through with the deal. And, you know, with, with what was going on, I don't blame him. We won't go further into this, but if you take a look, there is a lot of material like his management, FTX, prosecutors in New York, da-da-da. And in the interview, Bankman Fried declined to discuss prospect of prison time for obvious reasons, because he still has not appeared in court. So shortly before the interview, Mr. Bankman Freed had posted a cryptic tweet. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. The word what? Then he had tweeted the letter H. Asked to explain, Mr. Bankman Freed said he had planned to post the letter A, then the letter P, and it's going to happen to be, and it's going to be more than one word. He said, I'm making it up as I go. So, was So he was planning a series of cryptic tweets, something like that. But why? I'm improvising. I think it's time. This is a weird statement because I'll tell you, after this, this is what happened. So we take a look at SFB's Twitter. What? And we show this thread. He basically just went in and said, what happened... Not legal advice, not financial advice. This is all I remember it. This is all as I remember it. But my memory might be faulty in parts. He's tweeting this as he goes. And he may just put something out right now. I think he's writing a narrative. And so stay tuned. We will be covering this in real time. But I believe he is getting prepared to write a narrative, an apology to the masses. So what happened? If it's not this, then it's this. A theory by CoffeeZilla on Twitter. The reason for SPF's long what thread looks like looks like it's so he can discreetly or secretly delete tweets without alerting bots. Is Sam typing this thread in slow motion and deleting selected tweets simultaneously so that bots won't detect it? Is that the reason he's doing it? And so... You can go into this a little bit more. Um, Doer posted why is FBS or SBF deleting tweets and tweeting to offset his total tweet count. So take a look at this. This is some metadata. So maybe deleted tweet bot detection rules require require counts to be one negative one for one minute or something in order to trigger. This is odd. Okay. In other news. And actually, before we move on, I will keep you guys updated on this. And so not to worry, we will be keep keeping track of this in real time through Twitter spaces and everything else. 
Crypto.com CEO is claiming they accidentally sent the 400 million of ETH to the wrong wallet. Now, we covered this in yesterday's video. So if you want to go back and take a look at that, we do cover this in a little bit more detail. But Chris, the CEO, and he goes by just Chris with a K on Twitter, tweeted, it was supposed to be a move to a new cold storage address, but was sent to a whitelisted external exchange account. We worked with Gate Team and the funds were subsequently returned to our cold storage. New process and features were implemented to present, prevent this from reoccurring. Now, really quick, before we move on, he had a video that just came out today. And he stated that we did not need to contact Gate.io because we own those accounts and we just had to send it back to ourselves. Directly conflicting with this statement right here where he said we worked with Gate Team and the funds were subsequently returned to our cold storage. Something's not adding up because the today's video, if you go take a look at it, it's on many other pages including Aquan Daily, Daily and, and other crypto pages. If you take a look at his video, if you go directly to Crypto.com's YouTube, you will see him state a conflicting statement. So when Crypto.com goes bust and people ask how nobody saw it coming, given their CEO's history with scammy businesses, it seems like it's continuing. But the thing is, we did see it coming. You know why? CEO, guy who goes by Chris with a K on Twitter... This actually just came out about him today, or actually uh, yesterday, late yesterday. Crypto.com CEO's old company was known for shutting down abruptly and suddenly with no prior warning. Word to the wise, take your money out while you can. The Ensogo debacle continues as shoppers and merchants slam the company for shutting down its online stores abruptly, suddenly, and with no prior warning, says reports coming from all over the region. This is crazy. Get your money out of crypto.com and just ride this out. See what happens because we will triumph eventually. In other news and more positive news, CZ Binance tweeted to reduce further cascading negative effects of FTX. Binance is forming an industry recovery fund to help projects who are otherwise strong but in a liquidity crisis more details to come soon in the meantime please contact binance labs if you think you qualify also welcome other industry players with cash who want to co-invest crypto is not going away we are still here let's rebuild this is awesome this is what i want to see this is what we want to see because although it may seem like biased and i'm sure cz is not perfect. At least he is trying to come off as transparent as possible, even if he is getting criticism for it. Now, before we go, we'll take a look at Bitcoin, see what's going on. So far, the week hasn't been too aggressive, hasn't been too trying, um, but it is safe to say that we could see another leg down. If not, then we will probably go sideways for quite some time until the Fed pivots, until regulation comes in, this, that, and the other, as this event is really starting to eerily look like the 2000.com crash. Hopefully, politics can just, you know, control itself so nothing else drags us down. But something to consider, we have started out nicely for the week. That does not mean that we're going to end it nicely. This has been Cryptolenium. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video, and be well. Thank you, and good night.